Where do you live? Where do you come from? We usually answer this question by mentioning our hometown or the neighbourhood or the street we reside in. We think about our apartment or house, the bathroom with the nice tiles, the furniture that shows our style, the kitchen that feels warm and homely. But there is one place that we never mention, but all use every single day, public space. But what defines public space? How do we experience it? And for what reason? And most importantly, what makes up the ideal public space? Copenhagen is one of the cities in the world where they've put much thought into the development of their public space. As the home of Georg Jensen, Bang & Olufsen and Lego, style doesn't come strange to the capital. Copenhagen is known for its medieval city centre, but also for its modern outskirts with impressive architecture. Bjarke Ingels, aka B.I.G., is one of the architects that has taken the classic tradition of building in Copenhagen to a new level. A couple of his designs now grace the suburbs of the city and have become part of the public image. In this quest for the ideal public space, we investigate three completely different domains in the city of Copenhagen. Kongens Nitor. Once a peasantly pasture, King Christian V turned it into a place royale in the 17th century. He missed the look and feel of his favourite city, Paris, whilst being in his hometown and was set on transforming the Measley Meadow into a place that could withstand any comparison with Paris. He gave the buildings Parisian facades and put an equestrian statue of himself in front so he could enjoy the buildings forever. Today the square is under construction, a new metro station is being built. Gamaltor. The old square is in fact truly the eldest square in the city of Copenhagen. For over nine centuries, the square has been the location of the city market. One maybe expects medieval buildings in a place like this, but due to the great fires in Copenhagen of the 18th century, the buildings are all relatively new and built in the neoclassical style. This means imposing and grand, yet picturesque buildings. Gemeltor is linked to the Kongens Nitor by the Strogat. The street, exclusively for pedestrians, runs for more than one kilometre and houses many of Copenhagen's shops. Superkilen. Superkilen, finished in 2012, has been part of an upgrading project in Nürbro. The disadvantaged area has been greatly enhanced with the new park. To reflect the neighbourhood and its ethnical diversity, a variety of objects from 60 different countries has been placed across the area. Three zones, three colours. Extreme red colours are laid down as a carpet in the red square, which extends from Nabra Hall. With the red colour climbing up the walls, the 2D park is converted into 3D. In the black market, white lines curve around the objects and highlight them. On top of the hill, black and green are met with a hard boundary. The red and black asphalt is alternated with grass and lots of different trees to make for a more spectacular image. Senna Boulevard Senna Boulevard, formerly known as Dogshit Boulevard, can now be known for its original name again, as it was renovated by SLA in 2006. People now wander this southern boulevard again without having to fear for their Danish fashion. The characteristic, slightly bended linear space, which finds its origin in the first railroad of Copenhagen, is divided into different sections. In a participation project with the local residents, these sections were filled in with different functions. The places are distinguished by the difference in materialisation – stone, gravel and grass. Because of the use of different kinds of trees, which bloom in different seasons, there is always something to look at. So, three peachy projects in a stunning city. Though, if you've watched carefully, 
you'd have noticed that we focused entirely on the way these places look, the appearance, or better yet, the image of the public space. But is this all there is to public space, or is there more that meets the eye? In order to find this out, we interviewed Christopher from SLA, an architectural firm specialized in designing landscapes. In SLA, we, 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 we believe that the best way to develop cities uh, and to develop anything is through uh, you know, nature-based nature -based design and nature-based principles. So in order for a public space to work, you not only need a perfect image, but also the perfect feel and functionality. It's time then to explore these three fundamental concepts through the eyes of the users of public space. Um, we haven't really spent much time in this square yet, I think mainly because this is here, that there is, it's not doesn't feel very relaxing in here. So if a public space doesn't make its users feel good, people tend to skip it altogether and move to someplace else that makes them feel more at ease. But how can you create a space that makes people feel good? What defines our feeling about public spaces? A space consists of different elements that can provoke particular feelings and emotions. One of them is nature. Through nature you can actually get a, a great sense of um, emotional belonging. We are, and, and you know, there are a lot of scientific there are studies that show that when you go through just a very small part of nature, but the right nature again, uh, your stress, the, the, your, your body's stress level falls, you know, very, very significantly. So the designers of SLA implemented nature in the design of the Senna Boulevard. What did the users think about this? I think it's important with green as a color and green as uh, and the tex texture of grass or trees. Uh, I think it's, it helps a big deal, uh, like you said, to, to feel that like you're somewhere else. Implementing nature in the design of the new Senna Boulevard positively transformed the area, which resulted in better feelings. Ten years ago that you would uh you wouldn't want to hang out here uh, in the middle of the night. <laughs> so, uh, so it definitely uh, makes it a lot more friendly and, and um, welcoming that it's uh, green. So you feel better when you're in nature. You communicate better with people when you're in nature. You maybe get together and uh, you know, exist together in another way using nature. Apart from nature, the materials used can also have a profound effect on the way people feel in public space. Materials and colours can be used to create a more profound feeling, as done in Superkilen. Superkilen uses a lot of materials in different colours to distinguish the spaces and evoke different emotions. Cold hard concrete painted in vivid colours is used to give a sense of place to all the objects that are placed in Superkilen. It's nice and quiet. Yeah and active, uh, spacious. The third dimension that has an effect on how we feel about a place has to do with our place in it. Does it have the right proportions? A place needs to make us feel elated and in the right place. There's nothing worse than a disproportional space that makes you feel like an ant and completely out of place. A perfect example is the King's New Square which uses a scale of 1 to 6, the same as Vitruvius's head-to-body ratio. These open spaces um, contribute to like a more open and nice big city. This effect can also be used with smaller objects, such as the object in Superkulen, or the trees in the Senna Boulevard. A very important, uh, definitely. It uh, helps the city feel more spacious, I think. The final aspect that defines the way we feel in public space is our sensory experience. We can smell the flowers, hear the children playing and taste the beer we got from the kiosk at the corner of the street. Um, we live here and I think it's great. I lived here before everything was done and it was just a place you didn't go. It was um, quite scary and it was just dark and you, you didn't go there at night. But now it's, you know, it's open, it's beautiful, it's colors. So to make a person feel good in public space, designers have got to keep four fundamental aspects in mind. Nature, materials, 
proportion and sensory experience. That concludes feel, but as Christopher said, there's also another aspect to public space. Why would one go to a place where there's nothing to do? I think there's room for everyone. There's room for young people buying pizzas, having beers, mm -hmm. sitting on the grass. There's people like room for like me with the dog. There's room for people with children. There's a uh, playground. So I think there's room for everyone. So for a public space to operate well, there needs to be something to do for all kinds of people. The space should deliver all its visitors' demand. But that's not all. On a larger scale, the public environment can also impact the way its visitors feel about each other. This is exactly what BIG try to do at Superkilen. The sole function of this space is to unite different ethnicities. This is done through different objects, chosen by the residents of Nürburgru themselves. These objects include the octopus slide from Japan, the swings from Iraq, the dentist sign from Qatar, the biking racks from Holland, birdhouses from Denmark, travel rings from the USA and a pavilion from Russia. But does this really work? Can objects unite people with different backgrounds? In the Senna Boulevard, they tackle a similar problem in a different way. Around Senna Boulevard in English, well, there has been a, a gentrification process. But the way that we then try to uh, go a bit against that in our design is that, um, that one, of the th one, of the, one of the things that were there was like the local kiosk, you know, where, where the drunk, uh, drunkards went to buy beer. So what we did was to put probably the best bench in the entire Sun Boulevard, we put right outside there. So that, you know, the people who drink beer for a living, you know what I'm saying, um, uh, they, could, they, they could be there uh, so that they wouldn't feel you know, pushed out uh, or, or left out of the boulevard. Apart from creating a comfortable space for people from different backgrounds, SLA also divided the linear space into different sections. Each of these were filled with different functions, also chosen by the residents themselves. In this way, they achieved to make a space that can accommodate everyone. The ideal public space for me would be, uh, well, something similar to this, where, where uh, you have uh, many functions. Um, so it would be a playground, a hangout place, a garden um, in one, so that uh, everybody could feel that it would be their space. But a designer cannot always start with a blank slate. Both the Kangens Nito and the Gamelto were originally built in a completely different time with a completely different mindset. Kangens Nito was built to demonstrate the importance of the king. Gamelto, however, had another function. This is the place where Copenhagen originates. On the intersection of two roads where a small market grew into a city of millions. Over time, the original functions of these squares have faded away. Now these two places, and especially the connection between them, play a big part in our consumer society. Shops, cafes and restaurants surround these squares and define the new functions. Because I'm in town, I've been out to buy a birthday present and then I have been walking up and down and then I saw this market. Functionality can be formed by designers or emerge through time. These processes can merge together though, as though both of them seem opposites. After a process of design, it's the users that ultimately develop the function of a public space. SLA has a particular view on the three elements, image, feel and function. So, it's, it's actually um, these two elements that we are very concerned about. And these, these are the elements that we always bring into play, the feel and the, f and the function. Of, uh, of, uh, of nature and, uh, and not the, the image. That's not uh, important. Is SLA right? Aren't image, feeling and function completely intertwined? When people describe their feelings about a place, they always refer to its appearance. Images can evoke certain emotions and give a specific feel and identity to a place. 
functionality also influences the way people feel about a place. This leads us to conclude that image, function and feeling are inseparably connected. We might think we have a recipe to perfect public space, but what do passers-by think? They are, after all, the ones making use of the space. I mean, some grass, maybe some trees, some more nature. Yeah. Uh, we can put that in. Yeah. Some more trees. So, what will be an ideal square in your view? Well, pretty much like this. You got history. You got people. You got something social, but, but I, I need something more green as well. A bit of greenery apparently makes people reflect positively on the image of a place. But what about the feeling? A place where people, they meet up and it is going to be more cozy and more not as stressful and ugly as it is right now. I guess it's a place where you can get a pause, a break from the city and feel that you're somewhere else. One that is place where you can just uh, sort of be yourself and relax, so... And what kind of functionality do people expect from their public space? Um, a place with uh, free toilets, uh, cheap coffee, beer. A place where we have some cafes as we have right here and a place where people want to come and hang out. It's a place where there is a lot of room for people to do what they want. Just sit and enjoy coffee or skate if they want or kids can play. Uh, a place that has room for everybody and, and all types. In short, everyone should feel like they belong in their public space. To conclude, when it comes to the ideal public space, three elements are of the utmost importance. People should be attracted to their public space. The materials, colours and placement of elements should make for a pretty picture. Using trees, flowers and grass can help to create a more natural look. Using nature does not only make for a beautiful image, but it can also help to make people feel at ease. A place that feels like home makes for a place people like to go to to unwind. Another way to make people feel at home is to make sure that a place caters to their needs. It should bring people together and have something for everybody. Where do you live? Where do you come from? This question will always be answered by mentioning your town or street, but someone living nearby the perfect public space might also refer to that place. A fantastic park just around the corner, a square everybody goes to to hang out, a communal garden where you meet your neighbours. By investing in the image, feel and function of these places, we might just create more ideal public space.